guys, Mr. Backberg here. In lesson 3.1, we're going to be dealing with exponential functions. So first thing we're going to do is just look at recognizing and evaluating some of those functions. And then objective number two, we're going to look at graphing out some exponential functions and using something called the one-to-one -one property. First thing we're going to look at doing is just getting an introduction to what an exponential function looks like. So I've got this basic f of x equals a to the x power over here. And that's going to be the general setup for our exponential functions. This a value right here is called the base of the exponential function. And then this thing up here is called the power or the exponent. Now for these introduction purposes, we're going to say that we're going to be dealing with a values that are greater than zero. We also don't want our a value to be one because raising one to a power is pretty boring. You're just going to get one back as the answer. And as far as the domain of our function, we can safely plug in any real number we want for those x values. I've got three examples I want to run through using a calculator to evaluate some of these exponential functions. This first one that we're going to look at says f of x equals 2 to the x power. And that x power that we want to use is negative 3.1. So firing up my calculator, I'm just going to type in 2. This little caret button is how I'm going to get my exponents. Now my calculator moves the cursor up to be like an exponent. Some of the older models might not do that. Uh, but I'm just going to type in the negative 3.1 power. And we get a decimal answer. Now for the next one, g of x, we've got 2 to the negative x power. And we're going to use pi as our x value. So we're going to type this one in very similarly to the last one we did. 2, hit that caret button. But this time we want negative. And then that x value that we were using before was pi. And pi is a second command right above that caret key. Hit enter. And we get this string of decimals as our answer. And our last example, h of x equals 0.6 to the x power. And we're going to use a 3 halves power to evaluate this one. So on my calculator, I go 0.6 to the power of, I'm going to put this stuff in parentheses, 3 divided by 2 since we're doing 3 halves. Hit enter. And we get this string of decimals as our answer. Next thing we're going to do is a little bit of graphing with some of these exponential functions. So we're going to graph out two functions, f of x equals 2 to the x and g of x equals 4 to the x. We're going to use a table to help us out, and then we'll check our answers using our calculator. I'm going to start with this 2 to the x function, and we're going to plug in these different x values. Now I'm actually going to start on the right hand side because these are the numbers that are going to be easiest to deal with. If we plug in a 2 for our x value, well, this says 2 squared, and we know that 2 squared is 4. If we plug in 1 for our x value, 2 to the first power is just 2. If we plug in 0 for our x value, well, anything to a 0 power is just 1. Now, when we plug in these next x values, we're going to end up with a negative exponent. Like if we plug in negative 1, that's 2 to the negative first power. Well, what we have to remember are properties of negative exponents let us flip that down to the bottom of a fraction. And then that exponent becomes a positive value. So 2 to the negative first power is a half. Looking at this negative 2 power, if we do something similarly, 2 to the negative second power, we can put that under 1 as a fraction and then make that exponent positive. So it's 1 over 2 squared. So we get 1 fourth. Doing something similarly with this negative 3 power, we'd pull that down to the bottom. 2 cubed is 8, so we get 1 over 8 for that value. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of those ordered pairs and plot them over here on this graph. So at negative 3 for our x value, we're at negative an eighth, so that's going to be just above that x-axis. And then at negative 2, we were at a fourth, so it looks like this graph is pretty flat right now. At negative 1, we were up at a half. At 0, we were up at 1. At an x value of 1, we were up at 2. And at an x value of 2, we were up at 4. So we get this kind of look for our exponential graph. Now for the next one, 4 to the x power. Again, I'm going to start on the right hand side. 4 squared is 16. 4 to the first power is just 4. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Now if we treat those negative exponents similarly to what we did with 2 to the x, 
Well, that negative first power would be like 4 to the negative first, which we would pull down to the bottom of the fraction to make it a positive exponent. So we get 1 fourth there. Doing something similarly with this negative 2 power, we end up with 1 16th. And lastly, this negative third power, we get 1 over 64. So plotting this one out on the bottom graph down here, at negative 3, we're at 1 64th. So again, we're really close to that x-axis. At negative 2, we're at a 16th, so still pretty close to the x-axis. Then we're up at a 4th, then up to 1, then up to 4. And then that last value actually takes us off the graph because we'd be up at 16. So we're really flat along this x-axis and then our graph kind of starts to increase very quickly. Now I've got both of these functions typed into my calculator to check our answers. The blue graph represents 2 to the x power just like we graphed it out and the red one represents 4 to the x power again just like we graphed it. I think these graphs look pretty close. We're going to graph out a couple more functions, but we're going to make one slight change to those functions. Now, if we look at this capital F of x, we've got 2 to the negative x power, and capital G of x is going to be 4 to the negative x power. So it's very similar to those graphs that we just drew, except we made the x negative. So what I want you to remember is back in 1.7, we talked about what happens to a function if you make the x negative and its graph ends up being a reflection around the y-axis. So I'm just going to plug in a bunch of values, plot them out, and we'll see what I'm talking about. When we plug in this negative 3 for our x, we end up with a double negative. So anytime we have a double negative, we know that we make that positive. So that's 2 to the third power now, while well, 2 cubed is just 8. If we plug in negative 2 for our power, again we get a double negative. So that ends up being 2 squared, which is 4. Plugging in negative 1, make that a positive 1, we just get 2. Plugging in 0, we get 1. Now if we plug in this 1 for our x value, now it says 2 to the negative first, which we saw in the last example is a half. And if we plug in 2 for our x value, we get 2 to the negative second, which we said was going to be 1 fourth. So plotting this one out, at negative 3, we're all the way up at 8. Now that's not going to show up on my graph, but if we go to negative 2 and 4, Four, that one will. Negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, comma, 1 half, and then 2, a fourth. So our graph comes down, hits those points, and then starts to flatten out around that x-axis. Doing something similarly with the next one. Well, if we plug in negative 3, we get a double negative again, so really that just turns into 4 cubed, which is 64. If we plug in the negative 2, we get 4 squared, which is 16. 4 to the first power is just 4. Anything to the 0 power is just 1. If we plug in this 1 power, we get 4 to the negative first, which is 1 fourth. And if we plug in 2, we get 4 to the negative second power, which is 1 16th. So now plotting this one out on this bottom graph, Nothing's going to show up until we hit that negative 1, 4 value. And then at 0, we're at 1. At 1, we're at a 4th. And at 2, we're at a 16th. So now our graph comes in very steep, hits these points, and again starts to flatten out around that x-axis. Now if we take a look at those graphs we had before, this blue graph for 2 to the negative x, well, we can see that we just took this 2 to the x power graph and we flipped it sideways over this y-axis. Same thing going on with this bottom graph with 4 to the negative x. We took this 4 to the positive x graph and just flipped it along that vertical axis. Now, all exponential functions have a few properties that are going to hold true for them. First of which being all of these graphs are either going to be increasing or decreasing. Meaning, as we read our graph from left to right, the graphs are always going to be going up or heading down. Second thing, they are all going to pass the horizontal line test. So we're going to be able to find inverses for these things a little bit later on in the chapter. And this last one, we've got a thing called the one-to-one -one property. So if we've got a to the x power equaling a to the y power with that same base a value,
then the only way that can happen is if those x and y powers are actually equal to each other. We're gonna do a little bit of equation solving and along the way we're gonna to have to use our one to one property to help us out in solving this one. So it says nine equals three to the power of x plus one. Now it might not be really clear where we're gonna go with this one, but we just talked about that one to one property that said if we had the same base value for our exponentials in an equation, then we could just set those powers equal to each other. So I see this base value of three on the right hand side, and I'm thinking to myself, I can rewrite nine as a power of three. Well, nine is just three squared. So we've got three squared equals three to the power of x plus one. Since we've got those same base values in our equation, really we can just kind of ignore what's going on with those threes and just let two equal x plus one. We would subtract the one over and we'd get x equals one as our final answer. In our next example, we're looking at one half to the x -th power equals eight. Now, in order to solve this one, we're actually gonna have to use a little bit of rewriting on both sides one half to the x -th power, well if we think about what we did earlier with negative exponents, that's really like two to the negative x -th power, and on the right hand side with that eight, well two cubed is eight. Since we have the same base for these exponentials, we can just ignore the two and say that negative x equals three. If we were to divide the negative one over to the right hand side, we'd get x equals negative three. Now I wanna remind you about some transformation things that we did back in 1.7 with functions. So let's say we were talking about this function f of x equals three to the x -th power. Well, let's say instead of just having an x power up there, we decided to make it x plus one for our power. Now thinking about what's happening here, we're making a change to the x value. So if we're thinking 1.7 stuff, we should recognize this as a horizontal shift. Since it's a plus one on a horizontal shift, that means we're actually gonna move one unit to the left. Now for this next function, we kept the three to the x, but now we threw a minus two on the end. Since the change is happening to the entire function, it's gonna be a vertical change, which means two units down. For this function k of x, we decided to throw a negative out in front of our function. Well, remember that means it's an x-axis reflection, so we would be taking this graph and flipping it down over the x-axis. And now this last one we've already talked about a little bit. If we put a negative on the x, okay, that's a y-axis reflection, so it takes our picture and flips it left and right over that y-axis. I guess that's it for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below. And thanks for watching.